Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our webinar this afternoon. This is one of a series uh, that we're covering with uh, Jane Manzar and today she's going to be talking about the benefits and pros and cons of um, email marketing. So I'm hoping to learn a lot and um, we have a lot of you with us already today. The numbers are rising quite quickly. So with that, I'm going to hand you over to Jane. Welcome, Jane. Great. Thanks, Emer, And hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so Emer, I've done two webinars uh, so far. This one's a bit different in style. It's like an email marketing workshop. So we'll be putting the presentation up later as well. But it's kind of hints and tips on email marketing. And before I start, actually, email marketing is something that's come up um, for us in Manza Marketing quite a lot in the last six months, especially with COVID and with online marketing and all that. It's what, it has the highest return on investment of all kind of digital marketing. It's 122% return on investment, free to do, easy to do. Um, so really, we're going to take you through the process of it, what's involved, uh, some good ideas of what nice emails would look like, you know, GDPR, how to get people to opt in. Um, and also, um, I've added some nice blogs as well. I've mentioned them before, um, HubSpot. And Neil Pertel, there's a few of them at the back as well. So it's very hands-on. And what we're presenting today is, you know, the presentation, I'm hoping that everyone's going to download it and go through it and go back over it again. And also, if anyone has any questions, if they can put it into the chat for email as we go along. And um, yeah, I'll get started. So just let me pull up the presentation. So I'm going to just hit present here now on this. And Emma, will you let me know if you can see this now when it comes up? So, um, present. You're good to go. Yeah, brilliant. I'm just good. pulling it up here now in large. There we are. Yeah, brilliant. So you can see that, Aimer. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Brilliant. So we'll get started. Um, so, yeah, so what we're covering today, just the contents. So what is email marketing? Just, I mean, that's very simple, but what it is. When and how to use email campaigns, um, the statistics, that's what I was saying to you about the 122% return on investment and why you should use it. Uh, then we, it's kind of, you, you could, might call this fancy marketing spiel, but it's it's kind of funnels and it's a lot of, of people here today, you might be aware of awareness, interest, desire, action. It's, it's how we take customers through the actual journey and uh, where we get them on the email marketing. Uh, creating a strategy. So we have like an example of five emails that you send to customers and when and how. Uh, creating your leads, a sample email layout. And then at the end, we've customers customized customer journey. Now we have a blank one of these as well we can send on to you, but it's what process they go through when they're going through the email marketing funnel. Um, so first of all, what is email marketing? So it's a process of targeting your audience and customers through email. So it's really, really targeted and really, really personalized. And it helps you boost conversions and revenue. So you provide your customers and subscribers with valuable information to help them achieve their goals. So something that helps them fix a problem or, you know, helps them on the purchase journey. That's what it is. And should we all probably are signed up to around 20 or, 20 or 30 different email marketing campaigns? Um, and with, with different brands. So why would you use it? So first thing is build a relationship with your customer. So we'll be talking about customer relationship management later, but that's a big part because, uh, you know, once you have a customer, I think it costs seven or eight times more to get a new customer than to bring in a new, or to, than to stay with a customer. So building relationships and like things like newsletter, a monthly or a weekly email, talking to customers about special offers and um, that type of stuff. I know that's, that's very big in fashion. I get a lot of emails on fashion and beauty in particular, uh, weekly emails with special offers or trends or, you know, fashion trends, that type of stuff. The second thing is boosting your awareness so people know about you. So it's your brand awareness. Then promoting your content. The great thing about email marketing is you can tie that in with your overall social media but also you can use content, say, from your blogs or your social media and use that to help to design your email. Uh, get leads. Leads as customers. So that's a fancy word for customers. Market your products and then nurture your leads or bring them on a journey, you know, so that you bring them from 
spring, summer to autumn, winter, or the different seasons or the different gifting seasons, things like that. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great uh, technique to use in your marketing plan. Um, so some interesting and good stats um, as well for email marketing. Um, so roughly 80% of marketeers, they reported an increase in, in email engagement over the past 12 months. So it's really become a hot topic in the marketing arena at the moment. I think now with COVID, people have a bit more time to look at their marketing and to look at their customer relationship system and to try and start building email lists. lists. But um, yeah, the number of global email users is growing and it's set to grow to 4.48 billion. So think about it. Every single one of us has an email account, much to our detriment. Sometimes, you know, we have too many emails in a day, but like we all, we all check our email at least once, if not twice a day. So email is something that we all use. It's on our phone, it's on our laptop. Um, from a study of 1,000 small business owners, email marketing was ranked as the second most effective medium for building brand awareness. So like that's massive because I think, again, a lot of us veer towards social media, towards Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but like what you can build and you're also building loyalty and brand awareness with engaged customers and people that want to hear from you. And it's the highest return investment. That's what I was saying is 122% return on investment. So it's absolutely huge. So like, I don't think I need to say much more to actually sell email marketing to you. Um, so the buyer's journey, right? So this is where we start. Now, this is quite interesting from an overall marketing planning perspective as well. So we go through this buyer's journey when we're developing uh, marketing plans for our clients. And it's, it's kind of the fancy word for it is inbound marketing. So we offer them relevant, useful content, and it takes the customer through a journey. And the stages, which I'm going to take you through now, is um, three kind of key stages. So awareness, so that's your first year or two. If you're new to the market, you know, you're trying to build awareness for your brand, people know about you. Consideration, they're thinking about it, they've whittled it down to a few options. And then decision, bam, money in, and that's what you wanna do. And that's our goal, is we wanna take them from awareness to consideration, to decision. And um, I suppose in as fast a period as, as, po as possible. So here um, are the three stages. So we have awareness, consideration, and decision. So awareness, the prospect, you know, they have a problem or, or an opportunity. There'll be a lot of people, I suppose, in this area now, they're thinking of Christmas. So I know there's a lot of really good campaigns at the moment uh, through the Design and Crafts Council, like uh, Buy Local and Champion Green and all that, but they're looking for you know, a nice gifting um, idea for Christmas or a, a nice personalized gift. So they'll research, they'll look into you. Then the consideration is they've whittled it down to two or three people and they're kind of getting to the next stage. And then finally, the decision, this is what we want, this is where they want to buy the product from you, is they've decided on their solution or their approach. They get their list of vendors and then they literally make their final purchase decision. So they're your three steps. Um, for the journey, for the buyer's journey for awareness, that's letting people know you exist. Usually that starts through social media, through your website, through posts, through blogs. And from a traditional marketing perspective, I didn't put this up here, but PR, we, we were just chatting about PR, uh, like the Irish Made Awards were in the Irish Country um, magazine there this week. That's a great way of getting awareness, but that's your first. So that's your first stage of getting awareness of your brand and pulling them onto your website so we can then get them to sign up and subscribe to your newsletter or your email list. Then, then once we get them in, so once they know you exist, which is the awareness stage is a lot of above the line PR kind of, um, you know, people talking about your brand, influencers, all that. We get them onto the website um, and a lot of websites, they will have a subscribe for your newsletter or for a monthly email and you try and capture people's information. It could be pop-ups, a discount, a subscribe. And we're covering GDPR um, coming up, but we have to get them to opt in as well. So I'd say a lot of you are aware of that, that there's no longer that we get people to opt out. Um, now we have to get them opt in. So that's really, really important to look at your GDPR as well when you're setting this up and that it's done properly. Then the decision, 
is you have your email. So you're building your email list and you're building that month on month and you're getting people that are engaged with you. They want to become your customers and then you give them a series of emails. Um, particularly, I know, with fashion and gifting, it's kind of information about trends, what's new in the industry, um, and then maybe coming up to Christmas or things like that, um, you know, things like discounts or money off, or if you subscribe to a newsletter, um, you get 10% off, that type of thing. So you build the trust and the leads. And then there's also what we would use a lot is CRM. Now, I'd say a good few of you would, I don't know if you would have heard of CRM, Customer Relationship Management. So um, in Manza Marketing, we're starting to use this. We use a program called Zoho, Z-O-H-O, but there's HubSpot, there's Salesforce, there's an inordinate amount of them. But you can tie in your email marketing with these and track the history of the customer interactions, you know, look at the views, how many emails they've opened, calls to action, that type of stuff. Um, you know, if you're using uh, schedulers like Hootsuite or that, they, they can also um, give you information on it. Um, so it'd be looking at your open rate and how people are engaging uh, with the email campaign. Um, so then the retention and retention is really, really important. Um, so that's keeping people engaged and involved with the brand. And, you know, retention, as I said, is one of the, the most cost effective ways of promoting your brand. So basically what it is, is it's key to the process. So retaining customers and creating brand promoters isn't easy. And this is why it has to be at the front of your mind when you're creating content, like because it's one of the most cost effective ways of marketing. You know, you answer queries, respond to mentions on social media, follow up customers, talk to them, get their feedback, that type of stuff. So some ideas here, like customer service programs through email and um, to set out standards expected from your team. Referral programs, um, you know, um, people offering discounts or kind of, you know, like that. Um, I know a lot of influencers and that would do that, but then trying to get a referral program through your email and then feedback, you know, what do people think about your product or what do they like about it? Um, surveys, you know, I would think for design and crafts in particular, feedback and surveys would be really interesting to see what are the key issues of fashion uh, things like sizing and that type of stuff would come up quite frequently or what are their pain points in online shopping or you know things that when you think about when you're buying your product is there anything you want feedback on i know as well sometimes people put up new ideas or that type of stuff so really really good to keep your customer engaged in the whole process um so then actually if you're going to do an email marketing campaign you need to have a good list because you can't email to nobody so, you know, you have to start by thinking about your subscriber list and lead magnets. That's a fancy way of actually getting names and people in on your database. And that's gold once you have them in and that they want to hear from you. Um, so the lead magnet, right? This is a fancy way of saying to people, I want you to join my email list or subscribe. So it's something that's going to attract people in to your brand or to your website or to your email offering and it's usually the form of a free offer or a discount or what we we worked with a shoe brand recently and they have they have a vip club so that there's special vip offers um or you know if the special offers that are coming up they will get the offer first so the offer it, it can take a number of formats it has to be valuable and given in exchange for an email address so ebook, infographic, discount, free webinars, that type of stuff, something that's going to give something back to your customers. Um, or like if you're launching a new range and, you know, it's something very exclusive and your, your customers that are signed up to your email list, they can be the first to hear about a new brand that's been launched or a, a, a new range or product offering. And, you know, make sure that when you're trying to pull people in, give them a reason. A lot of fashion sites in particular, they would have this pop up when you go on to the site and it has subscribe here for a 10 percent discount on your opening purchase or subscribe here for our, our email and newsletter on the latest fashion trends. Something that's going to give back to the customer and that's going to draw them in. So that's the very first thing. 
Then opt in, really, really important. This is your GDPR. So you need an opt in form, you know, so to make sure that they're okay with signing up, that they consent when they are giving your email address, that they're happy to receive the email from you. So, you know, um, unfortunately, it's not like it was a few years ago where we could just email everyone. Now with GDPR, we have to have our customers opting in and be happy about that. And, you know, it's really, really important that you have that and you have that set up properly when you're starting your email campaign. And, you know, you can do this through a pop-up on the website, uh, option on your website or something at checkout stage. And they need to be eye-catching and nicely designed. So, you know, that's not difficult um, to, to do. And, you know, also think about it, like really you should ask your subscribers to opt into an email just once. Um, that they would they would prefer like one opt in rather than two, and the open rates are higher like through a, a welcome email that type of stuff. Um, so yeah, so then I just put up as I always do a case study on Elaine Madigan, and actually there's another brand, Castina, which is another beautiful cashmere brand, and these two brands in particular are very good at email marketing. So they have a subscribe option on their website for their newsletter. And then they send an email to opt in and in line with GDPR. So, you know, you're, you're subscribing in, you'll get your monthly newsletter or your weekly email from Elaine Madigan, tell you about special offers, tell you what's happening, what's cool, what's on trend. Um, and it's done, you know, the call to action is through the website and when you land on the website. Um, and then this, this I like this slide. This is quite helpful. So this is our kind of a simple kind of email campaign and different types of emails at the different stages of your email campaign. So your first email usually is a welcome email and it thanks you for, you know, showing interest in your service. Then your second email would offer something uh, enticing. So like it would be a freebie say 10% off when you purchase online or you subscribe to our newsletter, some kind of gold that's going to tie them in and get them um, involved. Then the third email would it could include a customer testimonial or someone talking about loving your product or how good it is. And the fourth, again, some more stories. You're again building the relationship on how unique and different the product is. And then the final one is kind of purchase now, looking for something for Christmas, bam. Um, once you start engaging with your customers as well, you could have a weekly email of a promotional offer or something that's coming up. Um, I have some examples coming up as well of emails and some brands I follow like Locatan and Dune, where they, they tie it in with their promotional calendar. So that's another thing to think about when you are looking at your email marketing campaigns, look at your overall social media, and promotional calendar. So um, I think I mentioned the last webinar, like there's obviously key purchasing periods for your brand. Obviously this time of the year in particular, you have things like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, you know, uh, like all the click and collect and all the online purchasing with COVID now at the moment. But look at what's going on in the industry, but also look at what is going on in your sales cycle. So also look at what you're planning and how often you're going to send them and how you're going to pull them in. That's a nice flow of your of your emails. Um, and then th I think really, really important and what is really good about email marketing is that you can personalize it. So, you know, personalize, I would say when possible, personalize really all of the time. So, I mean, all of the emails I get are dear Jane. They're not dear sir, madam. They have my name in it. It's personalized to me. I use actionable language. So like take, download, reserve, you know, something snappy. And the subject line, and they say that this is the, the biggest area where people would look at open rates is the subject line. It's a subject line and the first 25 words. It's visuals. It's call to actions. You know yourself if there's something like free or special offer or the latest news or something that's going to bite so think about your subject line and your email copy. That's really, really important for click to rates. Write in the second person, um, just when you're writing, and talk about the benefits, not the features. 
So talk about our beautiful new product made with the best quality fabric and the lovely soft, like, and, and talk about the experience. You know, it's not just a jumper. It's, it's, a, it's a hug, you know, it's wearing a hug or something like that. So talk about the benefits and be brief. So the less poppy, you know that yourself, and I know it myself, when I get emails, if they're nicely designed and laid out, I'll click and I'll actually, and you know, kind of a call to action. So like click here to purchase or click here to get our offer. When they're long and wordy, I think it's like three or four second, seconds, our attention span has gone down to. It used to be eight, but it's, it's, it's actually gone less. And I know with social media, people are reading less and less. They want video, they want photo, they want something cool, they want something different. And use imagery or, or mainly imagery, but imagery or video, something that's eye-catching and that's actionable and that's simple and is not like chapter and verse. The other thing I would say as well is when you're designing your email campaign, think of your overall design element of your brand. So... Uh, a thing that we an item we use in man's marketing and a lot of you probably have it with your branding is we'd have a brand bible so we would have all the colors the fonts the type of imagery the look and the feel we would have that all in one place and make sure that your email marketing campaign ties in with your social media with your website with how you portray yourself in pr so make sure that it's on brand and that all of the different elements are talking to each other um and also make sure, which is major, 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 someone proofreads your email. Because there's nothing worse than, I said it when we were doing the trade presentation a few weeks ago, if there's a spelling mistake in your email, you know, and a Grammarly is a really good one we would use. Um, I thought we just use normal spell check. But um, make sure that you cover all of those parts as well when you're physically uh, writing the email. Um, so these are, I pulled these up. I actually, what I did was I went into my own email, my own Gmail, which good God, I don't know how many emails I have in there, but I love fashion and beauty brands. That's kind of what I'm subscribed to. Uh, Lakatan, I'm subscribed to because I buy their products and I love their products. And um, this came in to me uh, during the week. Um, so get ahead with gift shopping and enjoy free standard delivery until midnight. So they're, they're getting, first of all, they're pulling me in on the gift because I'm thinking about Christmas and I think we're all thinking about Christmas earlier this year. I would say a lot of you are getting busy already now for Christmas. So it's kind of get ahead, call to action and then the free standard delivery. So bam, and that's what's pulling me in. But what I like about the design of this email in particular is shop app and calendars. So they have that in yellow. There's a call to action, there's a button to click it's pulling me in and it's making me hit shop. You know, it's, it's, it's pulling me and making me do something. And, you know, I really like enjoy some pre-Christmas pampering with our advent calendar. And there's not too much text, but nice, nice design. Uh, Dune, it was luxury lounge where there was a couple of different offers on it, but drew my eye for this. Number one, the loungewear, because we know there's a peak in pajamas and loungewear at Christmas. I think when, that's when most people get a pair of pajamas is around Christmas time. And, you know, there's a nice, like the, the language is lovely there, offering endless comfort and uncompromised design. Take your relaxing home in style with a versatile new collection of slippers and loungewear. A beautiful photography, very simple, very eye-catching. You know, and then Harvey Norman, uh, well, Harvey Norman are masters of marketing. They're just absolutely brilliant, seamless. You know, it would be a PR, be it on the TV, um, email marketing. And th they had like, so this to me is through the line marketing. It's marketing in all different areas. They would have their Christmas brochure that's in the shops or would be given out with the Sunday Independent at the weekend. And then they've used the design of this brochure as well for the email marketing campaign and you know the christmas all wrapped up great gift ideas for and then again call to action a button to click shop our full range online for click or collect or home delivery so there's a call to action there's something pulling you in why i put all these up was number one the kind of headlines two the design three the call to action and four the consistency 
of the branding across all of their platforms. So it matches social, it matches their PR, it matches their press, you know, and like you mightn't be doing press, but you, you probably would be doing PR and you'll definitely be doing social. So this then is an extra element. So that's why I've put these as kind of best in class. Um, the other thing as well is we use a lot in um, Manda Marketing is Canva, but I have some tools coming up, you know, that you can design your emails free of charge. Like this is the other brilliant thing about email marketing is it's free. So like happy days, you know? And um, so that's what I'm coming to here. MailChimp obviously is the most used one. So you can just sign up and get a MailChimp account. And uh, we designed an email campaign last week for a client of ours and it was kind of tying in with social media. It was a competition. We did it on MailChimp and um, Evelyn who works with me, she designed the whole campaign up through Canva and then she kind of brought it across to MailChimp. Sender.net, that gives you a free trial and HubSpot have just come up with a new free marketing kind of email trial. This site, Sprout Social, absolutely love Sprout Social for anything digital, social media, any of that. Um, go on to that blog because, I mean, there's 20 or 30 different email, free email marketing tools, but these are the ones we would use the most. Um, before I move on on this, what I would say for your email marketing, I would add it in as part of your marketing campaign, but get someone that's good at design now. You, you are all in the design crafts industry, so I presume you would be better at design. Evelyn, who works with me, does this because she's really good. She's an illustrator herself. She's really good at design. But someone that has a good design eye and like spend time on that, you know, and that might take you a bit of time to start, but well, well worth it, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing worse than a poorly designed email that doesn't have a clear call to action. And then finally, this is a lovely template that we use from HubSpot. So again, we would use HubSpot a huge amount for uh, persona developments, for all this type of stuff. But this is really nice for your email marketing, but also just to do a customer journey. And we have an example. We Again, we used Elaine Madigan, uh, Madigan Cashmere as our example um, because our branding is so good and our customer journey. And so I just want to take you through this. And I would think, I would hope after this, we'll send, um, I'll send on a template, um, an empty one to Emer and put it at the end of the presentation, that you can fill this out. Um, and really good in answering general questions about your customer, not only email marketing, but where they sit and what they're doing. So this is kind of an example of a customer journey. And when someone's going through the journey and purchasing from you, um, and when we were managing or designing inbound campaigns or email campaigns, we would fill this out with the client first. So the first thing we have awareness, we, we break it into awareness, consideration and decision. So awareness, right? What is the customer thinking or feeling? What should they do? What or where is the buyer researching and how will we move them along the journey from awareness to consideration to decision? So the first thing is consumers looking to buy good quality and long lasting garments you know, locally produced, they're willing to invest in quality fabrics such as cashmere, or they're looking for a gifting or something like that. So what do they do? They search online, blogs, social media. So that's that's where your website, number one, that you can be found on search, SEO, that's a different presentation, but and social media. So they, they're, they're being brought in through your other funnels first to get you to land on the website to get to the next stage. And they're looking at what others are wearing and, and styling. So that's why a lot of fashion brands would use influencers in particular. I saw a lovely example during the week of um, one of the milliners and she had um, Courtney Smith um, wearing her hair bands. And, and that was kind of her awareness and that. Then what or where is they purchasing? So like Google, social media, blogs, asking friends, you know, influencers, people of style and inspiration, that side of it. And I know that works particularly well with design and crafts. And then how do you move them on? So branding, branding, branding from the start, good, strong social media, getting other people to talk about you, that's your influencers, and a really good website, really nicely designed website, easy to use, simple to understand, and then sign up to the newsletter. 
bam, 10% off, or you get our weekly newsletter on what's happening, what's hot, what's not, that type of stuff. Consideration, they're now actively looking, they know their budget, they kind of want to get nearer to the decision made. So they'll go onto the website, they do more research, and they'll talk to people that have bought the product. And then the reviews and what do people think of the product? And then how do you do that again? Social media. And then this is where your newsletter comes in. So you won't necessarily have converted them in the consideration stage. You'll be getting them involved. They'll get your newsletter. They'll get your information about you. And they sign up to the newsletter. So that's your opt-in. Um, and very, very important that that's easy to do. I think they're saying like it's three or four clicks max on a website now. And for this, it's around two clicks. Um, and then the decision, they need to decide, you know, what product they're going to go for. Is it the quality? Is it the cost? Is it, you know, how long? I, I bought, um, you know, Ackley Leisure has obviously become massive now during COVID. And I bought um, some lovely yoga gear, but it took three weeks for it to arrive. And no emails, no nothing of when was it going to arrive. Um, so that really turned me off because I was like, God, I've had to wait three weeks to get delivered. So, you know, look at, people will look at that. And if they signed up to the newsletter, be conscious of the emails and what they care about. Um, you know, and, and there'd be things like quality returns, customer service, all of that. And then, you know, when they're researching and making that decision, then it's the customer service. And, you know, if you're responsive, if you're on email as well, responsive. And then finally, retention and loyalty. So once they purchased, and this is an amazing marketing tool, and I think I've spent more money than I should have in on certain fashion brands because I keep getting the emails like even Dune or Lakatan. I'm going, oh Jesus, yeah, that's a great offer, even though I didn't really need it in the first place. But they pulled me in and there's the free delivery or there's the 20% off sale ends at midnight kind of thing, you know, and I'm it's in it's direct into my inbox. You know, I might have missed that on social media, but when it's direct into my email account, I'm seeing it. Um, so, you know, personalized experience and, you know, talk about your, your products, the authenticity, and then also ask people, you know, for reviews or to talk about it. And that then also pushes it forward. But, you know, it's really nice when you have them on the retention phase because you can upsell to them and you can be selling to them then quite easily throughout the year. You know, you can look at the different uh, times of the year, uh, Valentine's, Easter, birthdays, Christmas, you know, and have campaigns around those particular times of the year. And um, there's one thing I'll send on to Emer is the Hallmark um, cards. They have a fabulous calendar of events. Um, I downloaded it recently and I've used that for social media planning. So it's so you don't forget Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, Easter, you know, and also think about that as well in your email marketing campaign. Um, so I like this customer journey, not only for email, but also it gets you thinking about how is your customer moving along with you? What do they need? What is their pain points? Um, and then finally, these are kind of some blogs that I would, I'm big into reading blogs and listening to podcasts and there's so much information out there. I'm um, big, big fan of HubSpot. And HubSpot, they give some lovely email marketing examples in that blog, some design, like 19 examples of brilliant email marketing campaigns. Um, and they're just anything and everything you want to know about marketing HubSpot, but they're particularly good at email marketing because HubSpot are a CRM system or a customer relationship system. Um, and they you, you can tie in your email marketing with all your other marketing with HubSpot. Sprout Social, um, there's a lovely blog there on how to amplify your digital marketing. And then Neil Patel. Now, Neil Patel is like really well known in the States. He's actually really well known in general for digital. SEO is his key thing, but he's good at email marketing as well. So there's another lovely blog uh, from Neil Patel um, and to look him up. So that's my presentation. And what I would say in summary, if you're looking at email marketing, uh, number one, really, really high return on investment. Number two, it's free. Number three, start thinking about your leads. How are you going to generate them? How are you going to get people in? Number four for me is it has to be part of your overall cohesive marketing campaign. So it has to be part of your calendar, not stop, start. It's like one email a month or two emails a month. 
what are the topics what are you going to talk about um and also really really cost effective but also a great way to retain customers and to upsell with those customers um so yes yeah, so i'm gonna i'm gonna end the share now um and it, i'll escape that email now and then just you know open the floor to 10 okay. questions that was uh, that was that was terrific it's great, great. we've now had um We've now had a three-pronged uh, approach uh, with Jane, and I have materials for all of you. So what I'm going to do is anyone who is here today but weren't, wasn't at the previous ones, um, if they could go back and, and watch the, uh, the, the recordings, um, and that'll make the, the materials uh, more meaningful. Okay. Yes. We have some useful um, information here. And if you have a Shopify website, you can use their templates yes. for email marketing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Would you view email marketing as a place to start or you were saying it has to be part of your overall strategy? You know, I wouldn't, Emer, I wouldn't have it as a place to start because okay. that's why we were going through the funnel. Yeah. That we need to yep. create awareness for yes. your brand. So I know I was chatting to you about this when we started. Like the big thing when you're, when you're launching a brand or why you would see a lot of brands when they're launched that they're in the press or the media or that type of stuff a lot when they're they're just launched is so people know about them so like if you look at as i was saying to you like the kind of pr the, the awards that people talking about you that social media website your overall marketing campaign people need to know about you to land on your website and then opt in so it's part of your strategy because people you have to create awareness for your brand so I wouldn't necessarily be starting, but when I would be doing my marketing plan, I put it in the mix with your PR, with your social media, with your, it's part of the mix. But it would be ideal, hopefully after this presentation, that people would put it in their mix early because it tends to be one that's underused and kind of we all think about, rightly so, we all think about social media and PR and press to get awareness out there. But it's the, the benefit of upselling and kind of bringing people on a journey. So I would not, a part of the campaign, not necessarily at the start. That, that's what I mean, yeah. you know, as, as, as a beginning, you know, at, at the yeah. beginning or as for, close to the beginning as you can. But do, do some people kind of view it as either old fashioned or something for much bigger firms? No, I just think it doesn't necessarily get put on the list. I, think it's, not talk, I think it's not talked about as much. Okay. Okay. And it's not awareness building. It's more, yes. well, it, it's more retention and it's more kind of bringing people with you to, to make them do the purchase online. Do you know that type of way? Yeah. So I think it falls off the list and there is a bit of design and there's a good bit of thinking involved in it as well. Like, you know, you have to get your lead list. You have to have people, you have to opt in. You have to have the campaigns that they'll tie in with your overall marketing plan. So, I think it tends to nearly get put to the bottom of the list because it's a bit of work as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. There's no, I, if, if there's yeah. any kind of sinister reason I wanted to alert. No, 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 definitely not. Just bottom, no. Of the, bottom of the list, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, the, you're being thanked for your insights and tips. And uh, do you have any further tips on how to avoid your mail chimp going into a spam folder? I don't know, actually. I need to find that out. I, I, I'll find that out. Because uh, I don't have the answer to that, Emer. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure we, we will catch you again anyway. Um, yeah. Do you see this one here? Can you give examples of questions to ask oneself? Rethinking about leads. This is good, actually. Yeah, Apart that's a good from question. Having regular contacts, say, uh, from people who have bought previously and people who have attended workshops. Right. And what, what brand or product is this person or can they... Okay. Do you want to give me that that help on, on the product? Okay, I'm going to read the question again because I think it's yeah. quite a good question. Um, can you give examples of questions to ask oneself rethinking about leads? Okay. Apart from having the regular contacts, say, from people who bought previously and people who attend workshops. Okay, mm. not here. It's oh, yeah, there. no, I'll tell you, we I know how. Yeah. An online work, online yeah. leaving workshops. Right. Yeah, no, I'll tell you, that's a very good question because that person is saying, right, she would have had the leads of the people that were in the workshops or she would have had leads there. 
I always start, Emer, we haven't covered this yet, um, but I always go back to the customer and the pain points. So we were talking about that, talk about the benefits, not the features, right? Because features are, I don't know, it's a beautiful jumper, but that's right, it's a jumper made of cashmere, but the benefits is the, the hug, where and the hug, or it's that feeling. But think about what's your customer pain point and what problem you're fixing. And if you're trying to pull in new leads, like new leads through your website, think about what problem you're fixing for them. I also would, like with lead generation, that's a total different animal because you have to look at GDPR and contacting and lead lists and that type of stuff. But I would go back to the customer. I would go back to who are you selling to? What's their problem? And is there a way of promoting that then either through a social media campaign or something to pull them in and get them onto your website? So I'm going full circle back to the customer and their problem. Does that answer that question? Yeah, it's long. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, so. I think yeah. so. We've somebody given a useful um, answer, we think, to the previous question, which was to stop emails going into our spam. You can inform your subscribers to mark your future emails as not spam and save them as a contact. Great. Yeah. So there's a there's a possibility. Fabulous. Yeah, I'm going to try that, see if that works. Yeah. Okay. Okay, does anyone else have, okay, let me see. We've got to cover the spam order. So you were saying to stick to um, a pattern. So you're either picking um, one or two times a month or on a regular, on yeah, a regular that's, basis. That's, so that's back to your marketing calendar. So yeah. I, that's what I would be saying to people because that question at the or your question at the start is when do you do it? Like as in, and some people say to me, do you just, I get asked this question a lot in my marketing, what bit of marketing do I do? And unfortunately, I don't give people the answer they want, which is like do social media or do, I say you have to do it all. And they're like, oh, you know. So I'd be looking at the overall marketing process like your PR your social media all that but we would work we would look at a promotional calendar and that's what I was saying the hallmark or if there's any fashion calendars or you know you, you know the calendars at the time of the year and you know if it's new to you I'd nearly start with a monthly newsletter you know so what's happening what's new all that I, that's what I'd start with and just slowly slowly and if your monthly newsletter I know a lot of fashion brands there's um that yoga brand that I buy from, it's called Dare to Be. And I get a weekly uh, email from them with special offers or with, you know, if it's in January and February, it's gym time, just think about your yoga gear or it's those kind of call to actions. So it depends on where you are in the March in Germany, what resources you have as well, because you also have to think of, you need time to write the emails, think about what you're selling. So I would think most people starting off if they did it monthly and then, if they have resource and time, they could do it bi-monthly and then ideally up to weekly. But that's down to resources, Emer. So I think if, if you you know, if people even started off and did the monthly email, okay, so you're thinking I know a lot monthly, of them do that. Then monthly, then like twice bi -monthly, a month. Yeah, and then once a week. I know um, Castina, that brand as well that, that I follow and, and love, it's a, another cashmere brand. She has a monthly newsletter. And she kind of promotes the monthly newsletter and then people go on, they subscribe to that. And she she talks about trends and what's happening in the industry. I can pull up the website and show you, but is that but that's my advice because don't bite off more than you can chew. Because the issue is if you're going with weekly, you have to manage it. Yeah. Someone has to write the emails and someone has to do the design and all of that side of it. Yeah, and the weeks go very quickly when you're trying you, to you know what I mean? I and everything tied in with your promotional yeah. calendar. It doesn't always have to be money off. It could be like, you know, if you've got if you're if you're after getting your product into Iron or Brown Thomas, there might be a fashion show coming up. There could be a competition to win prizes of the fashion show. There you know, it doesn't always have to be money off. Yeah. Also think about that. You know, you're in an industry where when it's premium handmade design products. People are not necessarily for looking for money off. They're looking for a, a fabulous experience. Exactly. Here's you know. a very insightful one that, that, that I would think backs up, um, you know, the, the, the sole trader um, 
craft craft enterprise yeah. situation. You know, I mean, they're, they're wonderful and they're but they're doing everything. You, you know? see, they do so, everything. Yeah, they're exactly. doing everything. And, and as I just said, the weeks go really quickly. But this person, yeah. um, I, I think, has made a very good point. Um, they, they've just started a newsletter and they've told subscribers that they'll be in mm. contact four times a year. Lovely. As, as they know, they can't provide contact any more than that as a one person operation. Now, mm. I think that's that's a that's a fairly um, sensible approach. That's a very good. Whoever that is, they're on the money. Um, you know, it, four times a year is better than no times a year because you're still talking to your customers four times a year. So and she's dead right, because if she's a sole trader and she's trying to manage her social media, make the product, do accounts talk to buyers, do trade fairs. She's looking at her calendar and saying, I can commit and I will do four newsletters a year. And then as she gets, as it starts to build, she'll be able to, but yeah, no, that, that's actually very good advice. Okay, and we have another bit here in that um, email messages from businesses go automatically into a promo folder in this person's personal Gmail account, meaning it takes a bit more effort to view them. From the business point of view, it is possible to ensure emails go into the. Is it is it possible to ensure that emails go into the receiver's inbox? That's again something I'd need to just come back to you on. That's more set up, I think, with Mailchimp. Yeah. yeah, but I'll come back to you on that, as in where the emails go into. Do you know? So, but that's a very valid point because if they can, they do. A lot of them do go into the promo. Yes. that's the setup but that's kind of the mailchimp setup so i'll come back to you on that um emer that's so, great I, I think down the line it could be well worth us having um a, a, you know a, a session with you of all questions right do you know what do you mean by that now as that in it, it's, you know well i, I give you I give you a bit of warning and help that yeah if i'm getting an amalgam of questions in yeah that would that, be brilliant that and have I have a workshop where you where you address those and i, I think yeah. that would be a really good idea Okay. definitely okay yeah. my colleague's sending an answer in great she's more on the ball than me yeah. okay this is our this is our digital our new digital marketing manager everyone and um, ask people to add you to their address box in their welcome email address list great okay here someone's asking is it better to have a pop-up box on website to encourage sign up or is it frustrating for people? Depends on how it's designed. I think I think the pop-up box is quite good. Okay. You know, that has just a little pop-up box, subscribe here to our newsletter and you get whatever your, your monthly news and events. So I think a pop-up is a good call to action. It, right. it, it, you know, good. yeah. Good. We have an awful lot of thank yous in. Right. Uh, there's one person saying here, it's all a bit overwhelming and thanks a million. And I, <laughs> I think you've made it really, really clear. Okay. Um, so if anybody has any more questions, if they fire it off to me and I will then uh, collate them and we might, we might do another session. Yeah, I think so. And I do. And you know what? It's quite relevant, the questions on, because that might be a good one. It's like a session on MailChimp or on whatever, as in this is how you set it up you know that it goes this place and the, exactly. you know that type of that's kind of more of a tutorial yeah and um, kind yeah. of process but i think that would be helpful yeah. and because a lot of people that takes a lot of time you know i mean we, we did start off um in our in our in our dark lockdown in, in march and we're really gaining momentum i mean we, we've done a mm. cer certain amount of um digital marketing but we're getting more honed in and uh, my colleague um, Joanna Salmons is putting together an e-commerce academy, so hopefully people right. tune into that. So we're getting we're we're getting better and better yeah. and more focused. So I think that that's what we'll do. Okay, um, I think so. We'll, and we'll and tell me, one. can you ask him or can I ask people of the people that are here today? How many people do use email marketing or have a newsletter? Would people, you know, can people answer? Or would people raise their hands or whatever? Just out of pure interest. Okay, yes. People people might people might come back. Okay, three people have raised their hands. Right, out of 30. Yeah. So that's a, that's a very interesting poll there, Emer, that three out of 30, that's only 10%. Yeah. 
yeah and one person right. setting up now so yeah just yeah a so it's only so that's quite interesting because that's what i found emer mm-hmm. that just it does because you see there's so much in marketing that it tends to get to put to the bottom of the list because exactly. there's so much other stuff to be done yeah but anyway we will we will we will pursue it so we will and uh I just, I just like to thank everybody for being here today. And uh, I think we've covered a lot of questions, haven't we? Okay, yeah, brilliant. And yeah. definitely, I love that idea of a kind of a workshop. Yes. Or as you say, come back with all the questions and we delve in to more detail. Do you know that type of way? Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's great. Brilliant. And if anyone else has any other questions or, you know, um, just send them on afterwards, Emer, and, and I'll get back to you. Okay, there's got somebody here. Last one here uses a converter kit as nails chimp doesn't integrate easily with Shopify according to web. They're a newbie. Right. They say yes. they're a newbie. Now that's another thing as well, actually, Emer. I should have put it in the presentation, but just to say to people, when they're doing their website, if they're new and yes, they're doing yes. their website, talk to their website designer about that, about like a blog or a exactly. newsletter and having exactly. a page for it and the setup. You know, and also the GDPR, the cookies policy, I think that's only in the last two weeks that's changed as well to make sure they're set up with that. Um, so, and also, you know, talk to their web designer to, to, to make, to, to, to understand how they can integrate their email in with their website, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. And the last note of the day is we're up, we're up to 20%. So 60. Oh, 20 percent. Oh, great. Great. Brilliant. So brilliant. Brilliant. Right. Great. Fantastic. And okay. um, thank you, everyone. Brilliant. And thanks a million for your time. OK, thank you. OK, so much we'll talk to you soon. Eva. Thanks, OK, thank thanks. You. OK, bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.